Ascaris lumbricoides is the formal name for a parasitic roundworm that often infests humans. This nematode was probably one of the first intestinal parasites to be recognized. In ancient times, it was often confused with a common earthworm. Although similar in shape, we see the Ascaris, or roundworm, is larger, and it is quite different in biological form. At the present time, the Ascaris continues to cause a public health problem infecting all races, especially young children, and the disease is called Ascariasis. Ascaris infections have been found in the mild climate of the temperate and tropical zones of the world for centuries. These worms flourish where the lack of personal hygiene and environmental conditions combine to favor human infection. In communities where these worms cause a health hazard, medical teams participate in the identification and control of the problem. Even though the prevalence of ascariasis within the entire United States is considered to be less than 1%, it becomes greater than 10% for children in many southeastern coastal regions and as high as 70% in preschool children in some areas. Here, the warm, moist soil provides ideal conditions for incubation of eggs present in material from the bowels of infected persons. Ascariasis is a hand-to-mouth disease Children or adults who put dirty fingers or objects carrying infective eggs into their mouths may acquire infections by ingesting these microscopic eggs. Once inside the body, the larvae reach the stomach and small intestine where they hatch. The active larvae then penetrate the wall of the small intestine and migrate through the circulatory system through the liver and the heart to the lungs. They lodge in the walls of the air sacs for about 10 days. During this time, they will molt twice to reach a length of about one eighth of an inch. While in the lungs, this parasite can cause allergic reaction in the host. Repeated infections can cause an increase in the host's sensitivity to the Ascaris antigen. This product of the larvae can cause severe allergic response and respiratory difficulties in infected individuals. In severe cases, this problem can become pneumonia. The larvae then break out of the air sacs and perforate the air spaces. After migrating up the windpipe to the throat, they are re-swallowed through the esophagus and stomach to mature in the small intestine. After about eight weeks of growth, the worms go through a final molt and continue to grow to a length of 12 to 15 inches. To overcome the uncertain nature of continuing the species, both male and female worms have well-developed reproductive systems. Eggs are stored in the paired uteri, which are readily observable in this dissected female. They coil and loop for a distance more than twice the body length, then narrow into connecting tubes. These again narrow into the delicate ovaries where eggs are produced. The ovaries of one female Ascaris may contain 27 million eggs at one time. Approximately 1% of these, some 200,000 eggs, are deposited daily during a 10 to 12 month lifespan. The eggs are fertilized by the male during copulation while the female threads her body through the posterior loop in the body of the male. The coarse granular mass in this fertilized egg will give rise to the larva. It is surrounded by a durable triple-layered shell. 
In this enlarged specimen, we see this shell, the innermost layer, a thin but tough membrane surrounded by a relatively thick, colorless middle layer, which is surrounded by an irregular protein layer, the corticoid. When fertilized eggs are passed in the feces onto dirt, they can undergo development if soil conditions are favorable. The larva develops and molts once inside its shell. The egg containing this larva can remain infective for up to seven years in moist, shady soil. Then any infected person who uses the yard or woods instead of a toilet or privy only continues the problem, not only for the residents of that particular neighborhood, but for anyone coming in contact with contaminated soil from that area. This is especially true since Ascaris eggs are extremely durable. They are resistant to most disinfectants and can withstand temporary immersion in many strong chemicals. When infection with an intestinal parasite is suspected, confirmation by laboratory analysis is usually a standard procedure. The analysis most widely used for diagnosis is the microscopic examination of feces. In using the direct smear technique, a small amount of fecal matter is removed from the sample, diluted and homogenized in a drop of saline. The characteristic eggs are then easily seen through the microscope. Diagnostic confirmation is not needed if roundworms are passed, and this is reported as self-diagnosis to a physician who will prescribe the necessary treatment. If individuals burdened with worms do not receive medical attention, the infection can result in severe clinical complications. Heavy worm burdens can cause intestinal obstructions, in which case hospitalization is usually necessary. This child has an intestinal blockage typical of those caused by Ascaris worms. The presence of Ascaris is confirmed by the presence of ova or worms in the patient's stool or rectum, and when possible, by x-ray. Physical examination may reveal a soft, poorly defined abdominal mass. The child may vomit. X-rays of the abdomen may show the intestinal blockage due to the balloon-like expansion of the normal loops. At times, a small round mass or bolus of worms may be clearly visible. Patients with intestinal obstruction due to Ascaris can usually be relieved by medication without any need for surgery. The patient is started on intravenous fluids, and suction is applied to the intestinal tract by a tube going to the patient's stomach. Medication is administered through this tube, which will relax the bolus. In two to five days, the worms are passed, and the obstruction is relieved. Should the treatment not relax the bolus obstruction, surgery may become necessary. The bolus can be located by a surgical procedure with the surgeon either relieving the obstruction by milking the worms into the large intestine to facilitate passage, or by removing the bolus. A positive program for control of ascariasis requires multiple approaches, education, personal hygiene and sanitation, treatment, and soil decontamination. In the first place, Educational programs for all age groups are necessary to make everyone aware the problem exists and understand the causes of infection and ways to control it. Special programs with films and other materials for preschool children can be shown in the classroom. Children should be taught how to prevent infection with worms through the practice of correct personal hygiene. Special emphasis must be placed on the importance of washing hands and using toilet facilities. Parents must also be informed, sometimes on a one-to-one -one basis, of their responsibility to keep themselves free of parasitic infection and to keep their premises free from contamination with these eggs. But education alone is not enough. Properly working toilets or privies must be available for the disposal of body wastes, as well as a clean water supply. Sanitarians will inspect site locations and approve construction plans for septic tanks or privies. Add-on bathrooms are a solution in many areas where substandard housing is a hazard to health. Treatment of all infected individuals is the responsibility of health officers and private practitioners. 
Doctors can be alerted to the symptoms of these worms during routine physical examinations. Inexpensive, pleasant tasting medicines, normally without adverse side effects, are used to treat the problem. In areas where this disease is endemic, the treatment must be repeated to remove subsequent infection. To bring intestinal worms under control, the entire community may be mass treated at regular intervals. There is no simple way to decontaminate soil. Ascaris eggs can be removed from the soil through the treatment of all infected persons to ensure that fresh contamination does not occur and a sufficient time lapse for eggs to undergo natural destruction. The time required can be reduced in some areas by the removal of overgrowth and rubbish to permit sunlight to reach any existing eggs. Prolonged exposure to sunlight will destroy Ascaris eggs. Ascaris lumbricoides, the parasitic roundworm, causes a community health problem which reflects existing environmental conditions. The entire community will benefit from a vigorous program to control worms and the existing environmental condition it reflects. Thank you.